Traveling to the European Union is a lifetime adventure. The stunning landscapes, the extraordinary architectural edifices like the Eiffel Tower in France and the bubbling cities will make you consider extending your vacation. But your vacation can be very complicated and stressful without the right tips at your disposal. You might even be wondering if it is the right time to travel to Europe. And are there any tips for traveling to Europe to make your travel hassle-free? Yes, there are. Here are 12 helpful tips to ease your tour around the European Union. Wait a minute, do you know that you can travel more and explore the world without worrying about money? Of course you can spend less with our vacation club offers. Simply book your hotel, car, rental, restaurant, or any of your dream destinations as a member and get up to a 75% discount. To join our travel club and get access to these exclusive deals, click on the second link in the description box. Before I dive further, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the spicy destinations that we're about to cover. Number 12. Verify your documents Don't get carried away with the excitement of seeing new places, discovering new things, and meeting the Europeans that you forgot to do the needful. Are you an American traveling to Europe, an Indian, or an Australian? Irrespective of your nationality, ensure to double-check all your travel documents, valid visas, passports with enough pages, and travel insurance are some basics to look at first. Children must have their own passports or ID card. However, you will not need a visa to travel within the Schengen countries. Most EU countries have removed controls at their borders. For example, you can go skiing in Switzerland, have dinner in Paris, and move down to see the Pope in Rome without having to show your passport when crossing the border. Number 11. Pack a few adapters One of the necessary pieces of luggage to travel with is your adapter. It will be painful to discover that you can't charge your laptop or phone because the European outlet does not work with your American-style outlet. Therefore, try to get a universal adapter before leaving your home country. Also, don't hesitate to travel with a power converter. The wall socket varies from that of America. Plus, there are fewer outlets in hotel rooms than in the United States, so trying to power up three to six devices simultaneously may be impossible, except you get an alternative. Number 10. Do this when your flight is cancelled. Don't be surprised your airline might reschedule your flight without informing you. If the airline cancels your flight, ask for a full refund of the money you paid for the unused ticket. You might as well benefit from a compensation fee of about 250 and 600 euros depending on the inconvenience caused. One more thing you need to know when flying within Europe, don't bother showing up at the airport more than two hours before your flight. Take your time, do everything other than before heading to the airport. If you have to check bags, the counter won't take them. You will wait until the two hour mark. Obviously, it's a huge difference from how things are done in the United States. Number nine, prepare to pay a tourist tax in most places you visit. After making all necessary reservations at your desired destination, don't be surprised if you're asked to pay some extra cash as a tourist tax. And unfortunately, it must be paid in cash and not an automatic debit from your bank card. The hotel you lodged will usually collect this at the beginning of your stay, but won't make a fuss about it if you don't have enough cash with you until you're checking out. This fee is set per person per night and is usually around two to four euros, though it does vary. For example, if you're a couple spending two nights in a city with a two euro tourist tax, you would owe eight euros. Even if you've paid for your hotel in full, you will still need to pay this tax on arrival. Most major European tourism destinations will also demand this from you. So always keep some cash at hand. Number eight, pay in local currency. To avoid paying a heavy exchange rate in any European country, always pay in the local currency spent where you are. For instance, if you're in Denmark, have some Danish krone with you. If your destination is Bulgaria, exchange some Bulgarian lev. Don't fall prey to the scam of major stores overseas that would want to trick you into paying in dollars. Yeah, it looks convenient, but you'll end up losing a few pennies everywhere due to the exaggerated conversion rate. So don't make the cheap mistake of paying in dollars. Pay in the local currency of the country you are in for a cheap exchange rate. Exchange your dollars at the automated teller machines at the airport before embarking on your tour. Number 7. Avoid automated teller machine fees Traveling to Europe can be so exciting, but you must be cautious of the money traps that might get on your nerves. One of them is the automated teller machine's fees. Imagine paying $5 for each withdrawal. That's weird, right? Besides many stores, restaurants, and tourist sites in Europe do not accept American credit cards. As a result, you must always withdraw funds. And remember, every withdrawal can incur a $5 fee. Before leaving your country, you should visit your bank and ask about whatsoever fees to expect and how to avoid them. 
Even then, avoid Euronet ATMs like the plague. The costs of Euronet machines are outrageous. Instead, find an ATM from an actual local bank. Number 6. Keep track of your coins. Euro coins go as high as 2 euros. Be sure to spend them as soon as you have them to avoid ending up with a heavy 20 euros worth of coins. Number 5. Always validate your ticket before taking the bus, train, or boat. In America, once you've purchased your bus or train ticket, you're good to go. That's not the case in European countries. After buying your bus or train ticket, you must validate it at every boarding point. Don't be in a rush to catch up with the bus and forget to swipe your ticket at the scanning machine. Once a transport controller comes on board for verification and finds you with an unscanned ticket, you will pay heavily for that. Yeah, that's how they make their money. Number 4. Keep in mind that many restaurants are not always open all day. For many countries within the European Union, it's a common practice for restaurants to close in the afternoon, usually from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Also, if you're visiting during the summertime, consider making reservations, especially in major cities. If you want to eat at a particular restaurant, especially one that's well known, making reservations in advance will save you some headaches. If you do not know how to go about it, your hotel concierge will be happy to help. Number 3. Slow service doesn't mean bad service. In most of Europe, polite service is reserved and slow, so don't expect the waiter to hover around you, ask questions about your life, or bring the check until you ask for it. To the restaurant owner, that would be considered rushing the customer. Waiting for a table is very rare, rather you will be politely turned away. This is related to the slower pace of service. It's rare to be told that there's an X minute wait for a table at a restaurant, because individuals who reserved a table are welcome to keep it for the night. You're more likely to be told that the restaurant is full and that you should try again tomorrow. Number 2. Visit Europe during the off-season Traveling to Europe is almost everyone's goal during the summer period. As you're thinking of sunbathing on the beaches, so does millions across the world. What do you think will be the effect of this? There will be long queues at the tourist sites, higher prices, and overcrowded beaches. Traveling during the off-season makes the experience more relaxing and private, and you can save money on accommodations, train tickets, tours, and every other thing. Edinburgh is cheaper and less crowded during the off-season. You can even converse with the Scottish natives more intimately. The best time to visit is April. You can enjoy the bloom of dandelions and the cherry. If you're eager to visit Greece and get the best of it all, visit during the off-season. Though the weather might be a little warm, there is less crowd, and you can selfishly enjoy the pristine sight. Iceland is the best place to visit in March. There are no queues, you can visit the Blue Lagoon without waiting for two weeks and stroll around as if you're private property. Spain, especially Barcelona and Madrid, can be crowded during summer. But in May, the weather is mild and sunny with few people. Number 1. Stay connected without paying huge phone bills for data. Use eSIM. The invention of the eSIM must be one of the biggest game changers for anyone planning on traveling to Europe. Getting an eSIM will save you time and money, and will allow you to keep your original SIM card in case someone tries to contact you via text message, they will be able to get in touch. Simply check it out online, download the app, and purchase an eSIM for a country or region where you'll be. Follow the steps to activate it, and you're good to go. Your original SIM card is still inside your phone, so you can receive messages, but the eSIM provides your data for the internet. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and remember to subscribe to the channel if you have yet to. And if you haven't joined the Vacation Club, remember to click the link in the description section below. We'll see you next time.